Hey guys, Rusty here at Ugly HP. Today we got a 98 Olds 88 with a 3.8, and we are changing the starter starter burnout on it. These uh, these are pretty big and bulky, so sometimes they're they're real tight. You have an oil pressure sensor back here. You got to watch out for whenever you're bumping it back, or else you're gonna take that out. So what we're gonna start with. We're gonna get the two wires in the back undone I already loosened this one up it's going to be a 13 that's going to be your positive that'll get your positive cable out of the way <clears throat> next is going to be your basically your ignition line that's going to be the one that if you're confused on if you're even if it's working that's going to be the one you check you're gonna make sure you have someone in the car when they give it power it's getting power <clears throat> this one right here is going to be a constant power so when they click the key this is going to give it power and then that's what's going to make the starter run so if you're getting power on this when the key gets clicked and this one's constant power and you got nothing then you got to replace that starter <clears throat> all right so Now that we got that out of the way, this model, someone's been in here before, so there's a dust shield missing, but a lot of times there's a there's a little dust plate that comes under it. Might have to pull out. It should be 10 millimeter screws that go up on the bottom. If not, then you're left with this 15 millimeter and this 15 millimeter. Uh, a swivel socket and extension. Normally that's all it takes to get it out. So that's what we're going to hit it with now. <laughs> One bolt. Okay, so this is where it gets really tight. Like I said, you got your oil pressure sender. <clears throat> back there, you got uh, ground wire back there. So basically, you want to pull it out this way. Until you can get it at a 90. Then you can go up and down and pull it out. <sighs> now, the ones they send you... going way easier because they're basically the same thing you'd pull out of a 3.4 or 3.1 they're they're gear reducted so they're they're a lot smaller so we're going to go in the same way and as we go in we'll spin it into place <clears throat> so now we need to start both of our bolts always start them don't don't force one in and then expect to run the other one in because it's it it always takes longer that way i know you're kind of fighting it when they're loose because of the weight of the starter trying to pull down but trust me you do not want to strip the block out and have to uh basically remove sections of the cross member just to drill and tap it so we'll get this long bolt in first because I always have more trouble with the long ones. And then the short ones.
My hands are all greasy, so it's hard to spin this. short one So now we're going to run those in there. Now a good rule of thumb that I like to go by is the one to run up there first is the one that's more easier accessed. <clears throat> you got them both started so the other one kind of acts as a guide. I don't want to sit and try to run this one up because the force of me trying to push on it at an angle um, might cause it to cross thread or not straight going straight. So use it because of the weight of the starter so I'm going to shoot the other side in first being that it's almost straight up and down less chance of running into issues kind of out of the way so I'm gonna hold the shaft of this that was kind of worded wrong hold the shaft of this you got ah. now I feel bad for even pointing it out because then everyone's just gonna be like it's that guy that holds the shaft all right, so get our eight millimeter. That one's a little bit more easier one to access <coughs> with the bigger one off. Also, uh, I probably didn't cover it because this one had a straight dead battery because it's been sitting in our lot for about two months now waiting on the customer to get the money up. But you do want to disconnect your ground cable and if your customer is like this guy and he has multiple batteries in line you still want to make sure you disconnect the ground on the other one just in case it's grounded in a different spot that you really don't know about <laughs> so that it doesn't complete the circuit you'll know if something's still connected because you'll see some sparks Everybody loves to see sparks fly. Ooh. Oh no. I found it. If that was a 10 millimeter socket, that would not have happened. So this is the one that even came with it's a 13. Can you get that guy now the the one that's battery powered all the time you don't want to sit and run that thing on there like you want it to be tight you'll kind of like feel when it's tight but if you over tighten it you got to think inside that that stud goes in there and if you turn the inside of the stud it'll make contact so then when you hook up your battery and you'll know when you turned it on the inside because when you hook the battery up it will uh, automatically just start rum, 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 trying to crank over because you already connected the contact from where that smaller one is supposed to connect. Well, and that's it. 
So, starter on a 3.8 motor, uh, which these come in some of your Pontiacs, a couple of your GMs. This is on an old, so they're also popular on Buicks. But, uh, simple and easy to do. You can do this laying on your back. It's actually kind of easier laying on your back because I'm having to work around you guys. But, check us out on Facebook, hit the like button, subscribe, and as always, keep wrenching.